Well, welcome. We're going to talk today about how to tie a tie, because people keep writing to me and asking me, how do you tie your ties? So let's go through and I can kind of explain how I do it and why I do it this way or not. So I think the tie is one of the more difficult things to figure out about how to make a tie and how to get your uh, not correct as well as how to try to get your um, simple correct when you actually look at it. So one of the things that makes a big difference though is the kind of tie that you have. So for this tie, for example, it's um, a Brooks Brothers tie. This is a four inch tie. It's very wide for today. Um, but I think it looks good on a bigger guy. So you're not going to really see too many ties that are this size. You know, you'll be lucky to see a three and a half inch tie um, these days. The biggest problem I think you have as a big guy is you have this it's called an area under the curve that you have to do. Um, so here you have to try to get the tie taken care of so that it reaches down to your pants, so that it should be up out of your umbilicus, um, <clears throat> right at your true waist, and that this tie should um, extend down so it's just touching the top of that. The tie that I was actually taught to tie is actually called a Nicky Knot, which is sort of like a half Windsor, but you do it in reverse. Number one, when you take off a tie, always make sure you take it off the way you put it on. So when I put on a tie in the morning, I usually have the collar up. <clears throat> One thing I'll say about this tie, so this is a 4 inch tie. It's um, about 57 inches long, um, to 58 inches long. That's usually pretty good for actually trying to get a good tie knot done. Um, this is a 7 fold tie, so there's no lining in this tie. If you open it up, it's all the same. <clears throat> fabric, there's no actual uh, internal lining. That makes it very prone to wrinkling though, so you'll see this is actually a relatively new tie, but you already can see some wrinkles that are starting to form here. Those tend not to come out, and you can tell exactly where the knot has been tied in the past. Um, if you get uh, a six-fold tie that has a lining in it, some people still call those seven-fold ties, but you see a lining. The lining tends to resist the wrinkling more, um, so it makes it a little bit easier. My problem with the wrinkles, though, are that since this is where the wrinkle is now, if I tie the same knot, I know pretty much where it's going to go. But if I change the knot and I want to do a Windsor or something like that, uh, which is much harder on a big guy, you need a much longer tie, uh, then this wrinkle could show up below and then it actually doesn't let you form a nice knot as well as a very good dimple at all. It can <clears throat> sort of ruin the look of it. The type of uh, tie you're buying and the length of the tie makes a big difference. Um, so for me, technically, this is a very long tie. Um, this is at like 57, 58 inches. Um, the problem is you can get extra long ties, and even if you're a big guy, you probably need it again because of the belly. But you don't actually find the same kind of um, numbers out there, so you can't get the size you always want. You always have to look for the extra long ones, <clears throat> so it tends to be a bit of a pain. So you can still buy a tie, uh, but a lot of the times if you want to use something like a Windsor knot, you wind up having to um, tie it short so then it shows up much too high uh, so you have to wear a vest or something like that. So for me, what I usually do <clears throat> is I start with uh, the tie in reverse. Um, unfortunately, um, I wish I didn't have to pull it up this high, but I do. Um, so this is where I usually wind up starting. <clears throat> um, this is a Nikki knot, this is why it's a reverse tie. So uh, for Windsor and Half Windsor you'd start it um, forward, but right now we're starting it in the back. So this small piece uh, goes across the larger one, the longer piece, um, and I start it like a couple of inches above. Um, then you go around like this, so that you're hanging down in the back, and you're going to go around to form the actual front of the tie, where the knot will be, and then you come back up and around. And this is where I can usually get a good feel for how long the tie is going to be. Um, this isn't how long this tie is going to be. When I push it through, it's actually going to be a little bit shorter. So if I push it through here, and then I pull down, don't pull down right away. I usually try to manipulate it so that everything is smooth on both sides. So there's no dimple, there's no nothing on this side, because otherwise the wrinkles tend to start on the sides. Uh, and that'll start to form a dimple, or you get two dimples, um, which is a look if some people like it, but it's not what I prefer. I prefer a single dimple, usually in the middle. And this usually will give you a pretty even look to your tie. So now if you see I start pulling, um, I start to get a dimple. So the dimple itself um, is a little bit off on this one, so 
I'm going to keep manipulating it because I can feel it pulling underneath. And then if I keep pulling here, you kind of put your finger in the middle and squeeze. And the more you pull, the more you get a dimple. <clears throat> so it's not unusual for at least the ties to be somewhat, the dimple to be a little asymmetric. On this one, I think if you do something like a, like a Windsor knot, you tend to get a much better one. But I usually wind up working it so that you would have to continuously pull up and pull out. So I put my finger up there, pull out a little bit on this, and you wind up getting a dimple there. And go ahead and button the, the top, like so, and then pull up, like that. Now you notice that the dimple keeps sort of disappearing on me, that's pretty typical. And you wind up flattening it out there. So you can see initially it was down here, now it's there. And here's the dimple right there, which I kind of pull out if I need to. <clears throat> and there you have your tie. So it really depends on the type of tie you really want to uh, use. Um, so then you put your vest on here, and this is good because now the tie is not going to show up uh, where the vest is. So here I have the vest, and the vest is going to be able to um, cover the tie, but the tie isn't going to be so long that then I'm not going to be able to see, or that I will see uh, the tie sticking out underneath it, which sort of drives me the wall. So that's it uh, for today. Um, that's the uh, training of how I typically do a tie. Uh, I can do Windsor knots in the future. I'll try you a little bit about how I do those. For Windsor knots, I usually get a much wider knot. You can wear those as a big guy. They actually look pretty good. Uh, but the thing is, the tie usually shows up down here, so it's way above your <coughs> pants. So you almost need to wear a vest in those cases, unless you have an extra long tie, which is fine. Um, but uh, in the future, I'll go over some other ties where we use smaller ties, three and a half inch ties. Um, um, and try to show you how they can have a different type of dimple depending on how you tie the knot. Different ties, it really depends on the tie. I have a lot of ties. Um, that, this one's from Brooks Brothers. I have other ones that are from Brooks Brothers uh, that are three and a half inch ties. That some tie a perfectly great knot and they have a really good dimple when you try it. Some of them are awful and you just can't get a, a dimple no matter what I try to do. Uh, and it drives me nuts. But they're all seven fold ties, so I, I'm not sure I know the exact reason why that is. Uh, but the type of uh, <coughs> of uh, texture, the type of material, be it silk or grenadine or whatever else you've got, um, would make a big difference in the type of tie that you're going to tie, the knot you're going to use, and what the dimple's going to look like when you're doing it. So don't think this is a one-step only procedure. I've shown you how to do a tie and you should apply to all of them. You really got to try your own ties, figure out where they would be, how they work, and that would give you a much better idea of <clears throat> where that tie is going to work and how you're going to get a dimple out of it. So it's a sort of trial and error kind of a thing. And the first time you buy a tie, you spend a lot of time trying to figure out where's the right place for me to get the tie at the right length to get the right dimple that I want. Uh, and that, that does take a while after that first one. And you start to get a feel for each tie and you know where you could start. Um, okay, well that's it for today. So uh, hopefully that was helpful and I'll post more in the future. Thanks.